it was June 19th, 2016. I went to Cleveland to watch the NBA Finals Game 7. The Cavaliers were playing the most winningest team in NBA history, the Golden State Warriors. And it was a historic moment for a multitude of reasons. Cleveland at the time had gone 52 years without winning any championship in any respective professional sport. And to make things even more interesting, no team at that time had come back being down in an NBA final series one to three. It felt like all the odds were stacked against Cleveland and it was a memorable experience to be downtown Cleveland at what was formerly known as the Clevelander watching the game with fellow Cleveland Cavalier fans outside and as the game started to wind down under a minute there was about 53 seconds left in the game three seconds left on the shot clock for the Cleveland Cavaliers our point guard Kyrie Irving shot a three with three seconds left on the shot clock right in front of the outstretched hand of Stephen Curry, the, at the time, back-to-back MVP of the season. Kyrie shot it and sank it and put the Cavaliers up by three to eventually win the game. It was incredible. That moment of seeing the ball go into the net And then seeing the crowd react to it and feeling the energy was something like I've never felt before and I suspect I'll never feel again. It was almost as if I was witnessing magic take place. And a few plays after that, LeBron had got a a defensive stop. I believe it was on Andre Iguodala to seal the game and bring Cleveland its first championship in over half a century. The reason why I bring this story up is because sports mirrors life. There is a cliche saying that goes, sports is a microcosm of life. And that's something that I've had to digest over the past six to seven years after my sports career had ended in high school when I didn't have a chance to go play college basketball. I was very resentful. I was very upset that I didn't do what I knew I needed to do to to go to the next level. And I abandoned sports for the next three years. Sports to me was kind of like my ex-wife it was something that I loved dearly in the past and couldn't bring myself to to be around any of it for my emotional stake. And during that time, I felt like sports was merely entertainment and didn't have an impact on people and society at large. But I've come to realize that sports is mirroring what's happening in our societies at large. When you look at the mass level of cooperation that sports requires in in order for things to run smoothly, not only do we have the fans who fill up arenas by the hundreds of thousands cooperating by not interjecting themselves into the game and, you know, just going single file into a building is an example of how we cooperate 
at scale in everyday life, whether it's commuting to work or going to work and contributing to, to the work that our, that our economy is built off of. And to take a step for, further, the cooperation that takes place between competitors on the court, that doesn't feel right at first, but when you recognize that you have two opposing tribes, if you will, competing against each other for a scarce resource, which is a, a win in our sense, they're cooperating in a way of obeying the laws of the game and obeying the conditions and the terms of what it means to get a foul or what it means to score and what it means to ultimately win. Those two teams are competing against each other and it requires massive amounts of cooperation to do so. So looking at sports as a microcosm, there's layers and information that we can pull out of sports and apply to our own lives. And that's something that happened to me about six or seven months ago when I woke up in the middle of the, of the night and I couldn't bring myself to go back to sleep. And I was overcome by this feeling of overwhelming anxiety of my future when it comes to my career and potentially starting a family. I'm currently married with no children and having children has something that's always been a goal of mine and looking forward to, to the, to the future of potentially having such a, uh, a high level responsibility of bringing a life into this world and doing what you can to nurture it and to, uh, guide it to be, uh, the, most impactful and uh, realizing its own potential so that way it can receive opportunities and make a large contribution to our society, it f- feels overwhelming and it feels like there's no standard you can reach to be completely and utterly ready for that responsibility. And then that level of responsibility um, eats into your own personal um, goals and uh, the things that you want to pursue. It makes me think of a, a quote that I heard where the saying goes that children are the most inconvenient things in someone's life and they meant that in the best of terms and that's how it should be as a parent sacrificing everything that you can to make sure that your children are uh, protected and supported and and in a position where they can pursue their highest potential is is the goal for 99 percent of the parents out there and that's what it will be for me when i start a family But what does that come at the expense of? Does it come at the expense of hitting the road as a comedian? Or does it come at the expense of clocking into the office two hours before everyone else and clocking out of the office two hours after everyone else? So that way I can spend more time with my future children and make sure that they have what they need. So this was all bouncing around in my head one night. Um... And I realized that one of the most important reasons why I want children selfishly is so that way my genes can continue. I realized that I'm a mortal being and my time on in this life is limited and that as I get older the less time I have to put in the work that is going to be required to to raise a family and position them in the best way possible. 
And it made me think of a shot clock. It made me think of how incredible that the limitation that I have as a physical being, how that creates an incentive for me to drive forward and become better and hopefully bring a another life that has my genes and my DNA and position them to evolve and grow past what I'm capable of now. And I, I know that as a parent, if that comes to my way, I'm going to have to rise to the occasion to be the best person that I could be for my children. And at the center of it all is this realization that nothing lasts for, forever and that we are finite creatures. And it's in our best incentive to get better, bring other people into this world and do everything that we can to make them better. Nature's shot clock is evolution's built-in mechanism for us to drive forward, to do more and to be more not only for our own sake, but for all of those aspects that transcend who we are as individuals and that push the ball down the field or down the court further than what it is now. And I I still have anxiety and fears and confusion about the future state of who I will be and what I'm capable of and what I'm able to do as a as a father in the future but this realization has given me an incredible sense of awe in how things have been laid out in the sense of the challenges that are presented to us as limit limit limitations on this life and how you can use that to create an incentive to drive forward and and take that last shot and and do things that seem impossible and turn them into reality Kyrie Irving was clutch on June 19th 2016 He had a shot clock and all of us have a shot clock. That is the finite time we have on this planet. But using all the the great examples of the last second shots and Hail Mary passes and last second goals made, using those as examples and using those as a microcosm to our own lives, we can carry that clutch feeling ourselves in our actions and throughout our lives to rise above and win against all odds. Thank you for listening and have a great week.